Hello everyone. Before we jump into our next story, I want to touch on something very important to me. I want my favorite people, the Nerd Alert audience, to be ahead of cyber attacks and computer hijacking. Start protecting yourself on the web at nordvpn.com slash nerdalert or enter the code nerdalert to save 77%. I talk about this a lot, but it's important, so I'm going to say it again. Your data is a vital commodity that hackers, greedy corporations, and even Russian malware creators are trying to take over every day. There's a lot of reasons why I prefer NordVPN. First, it has an incredibly easy interface that I think anyone could easily use. Even my parents and Luddite sister can do it. Even Jenk can do it. Secondly, and this is important, Nord doesn't slow down streaming video. So if you're on Twitch, you're going to have your location data protected from swatters. We just saw in the news a Call of Duty streamer was killed as the result of a swatter making a fake call to police. This doesn't have to happen. Nord is the fastest VPN product you can find. It won't throttle you like a direct Tor connection, and they've quadrupled their amount of servers to keep you safe without interrupting the rest of your life. I use it. I really like it, and now I can help you get it for 77% off. That's an incredibly low price. You can protect yourself each month for less than the price of bacon-flavored dental floss, except the VPN service is, you know, a lot more useful. It is time to talk about futurism because it is our new segment, The Future is Wow! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay, I'm in. <laughs> well, I like futurism and I like it as a subject mm -hmm. because it is the idea that we can use our ingenuity our uh, collected data, our technology to be able to affect the future and affect our own lives. And today what we're gonna talk about is VR. So normally we think of virtual reality as being something for gaming, something for maybe watching a film. I don't know if even you can call it a film, it's a little bit of its own thing, but sure, a film. Mm -hmm. But it could also be used for education. So there was a recent study from the University of Maryland, and I do wanna point out your point which is that it is funded by video game companies. It is, yeah. It's always important just to be a little bit skeptical depending on the funding of the paper. That's that's my theory. Yes. Um, but yes. No, I think I agree with you fully. Even though I'm very supportive of video games, you must always look at where the money is coming from. In this, they found that people remember information better if they are presented it in VR versus a two-dimensional regular computer, uh, which means that VR may be able to be used as a more effective tool in education. They said this data is exciting and that it suggests that immersive environments could offer new pathways for improved outcomes in education and high proficiency training that's the dean of of the College of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences at UMD. So in the study, it was, it looks kind of funny. We have an image from it. So two groups in this received this imagery on the screen. It's essentially, <laughs> it looks ridiculous. So there's, there's an interior room of an ornate palace, an external view of a medieval town, and they put different well-known faces all over it. Let's say like Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. Let's say like Batman. It was just all Mickey over Mouse, the place. Mickey Mouse, Hillary Clinton. Yes, I mean, yes. Yeah. Just as long as they're very recognizable. Mm -hmm. And the people had uh, the ability to either click around or visually, if they were wearing the VR headset, look around the locations, and um, what they would do is remove the images and have the people be able to place where they saw them. Mm -hmm. And they saw that the people with higher proficiency had done it in VR, which is an interesting outcome. Well, I think we're looking at, I mean, pedagogic studies have been done of uh, as far as like learning environments for mm -hmm. a really long time. So we've known that the more immersive it can be, the better. We also know that as humans, we uh, definitely have more of a visual based learning, which mm -hmm. helps. Uh, but I think that the focus element is really one of the things that I think shows here, right? You're, you're, immersed completely, you're in this VR, you know, virtual reality world, and there's nothing else that's distracting. I think that that's something very important I think to that's mind. very important because I have that problem of focusing. I was trying to prepare for the show today, but I kept, you know, maybe something popped up on my phone mm -hmm. and I went, oh, I have to go look at this now. Uh, someone texted me, mm -hmm. there was a news alert, I got an email, and then I have to go follow up on this and that, and then, you know, I run out my time, which should have been replied more productively. Yeah. And I, I mean, children, if we're talking about lower, um, you know, kind of like earlier education, we're 
talking about children who now are oversaturated with stimuli and just, you know, outlets and screens and things like that. So for them to suddenly be inside this environment and this space mm -hmm. is probably very significant, you know, when it comes to their learning abilities and retaining capacity too. Um, but I think beyond just the memory palace or beyond the, the literal learning. memory palace. Yeah, it looked literal. like a palace. <laughs> you know, one of the interesting things are the potential applications uh -huh. in whether it's just education as we think of it and in learning and stuff, but you're talking about giving access to students on, you know, remote exotic locations when they can empathize with different cultures across time. You're talking about you know, actual practical medicine, anatomy, you can practice things, science, you can use practical aspects of it with virtual reality, which you can't on screen. Oh, so you could maybe, you know, put someone in a, maybe a field trip or some yeah. kind of other uh, way that of learning that they might not have otherwise, because if the brain doesn't perceive it as being, you know, not actually in this atmosphere or mm -hmm. in this experience, does it not matter? Also the cost. Now, medical students have to, you know, be able to open up a cadaver and do all these things. And, like, now you're going to be able to do it without that, without the tools, without the super, you know, specific hygiene measures and stuff like that. It seems like that this technology can help a lot. <laughs>